What's good? Um, hi. For those who I don't know, my name is Tyler. I use he, him pronouns, and I am the creator of Thought to Thread. Um, welcome to episode five. It's been a minute. I've been doing a ton. So let's jump right into it. What have I been doing? Cue the photo montage. <laughs> started by going to Phoenix and I went and saw a bunch of my family and I did a Tough Mudder. Um, that was a lot of fun. In fact, it was so much fun that I am doing another one in July. I'm going to Minneapolis. Uh, I'm going to be meeting up with my cousins and I'm going to be doing the 10k with my uncle and my cousin and then I'm going to be doing the 5k again with everyone else and basically it's kind of like a military-esque obstacle course or race a lot of fun i was expecting a lot more mud turns out phoenix is the desert which means their mud is sand and sharp rocks it was a little painful but like i said i had so much fun and then i went and spent like three days just hiking in sedona um and that just filled my soul so much. I think I needed to just get outside, out of the city, go do some exploring, be on my feet, feel connected to the world around me. Um, and I had just the best time ever. Work has been absolutely crazy. I don't want to talk about work on here. Today we are going to talk about yarn because it is a knitting podcast, but it's also a little bit of lifestyle. Um, so I hope you are ready to talk about yarn. The first thing I wanted to show is an update on my single malt sweater. So I have officially bound off the whole body and I am doing the sleeves. I'm learning that I really care about things being perfectly even and symmetrical. So I am doing my sleeves two at a time. Um, so I'm doing magic loop in the round, uh, with my Chiagu's needles. These are six millimeter US 10 needles. I'm so excited to wear this sweater. I feel like I am just so close. It took me a really long time to re-pick up the sleeves, but I did it last night and I'm, I'm ready to finish this. I would not be surprised if I finish this by tomorrow, which is Sunday um, or Monday. Um, I'm so excited to wear it. Uh, I tried it on, it's a little snug. Um, so I'm hoping after blocking and letting it breathe a little bit, it'll feel a little bit more cozy. Oh, and then I also, um, I think I mentioned this last time, but I really, I'm not a big fan of like a raw edge look and a lot of my hand knits. I like the tubular or kind of the rounded edge. So I double, doubled my collar and I'm gonna fold it over and I'm just gonna whip stitch it. Um, down so I have an extra thick collar. It's a sweater. It's supposed to be cozy. So yeah, I am so excited to wear this um, It's just gonna be super soft. This is I think I talked about this But this is a new Aran weight that I am trying out. So if I really like it I think I might add it to my shop um, I did it in the whiskey and tobacco color and I just love how when the light hits it Sometimes it looks a little honeycomb. Sometimes you get the little, you know, tobacco-y green, and then you get the deep, dark, caramely from like a whiskey. Um, I love bourbon. Uh, so I just can't wait to wear this. The other thing that I wanted to share is what I was knitting on while I was traveling. Um, the sweater was just a little bit too big because I was only bringing a carry-on. I also didn't really want to be knitting on a big bulky sweater. Um, I feel like if you've ever knit a sweater around other people who are like, can I see it? Can I try it on? Or not try it on, but like, can you try it on? Show me how it looks. And I'm like, it's not blocked yet. You don't want to see it. So I was like, no, I'm going to bring um, socks. I have been wearing my hand knit socks almost every other day. Um, it's just been super cozy and I've been really into it. So I wanted a new pair of socks. So I'm using my sock yarn, New York Black, and I'm doing vanilla socks, two at a time. 
Um, so I did my ribbing, I did the length, and now um, I did an Aya Partridge heel flop. It's really hard to see because it is black yarn. Um, and right now I am working on the gusset. I've already done my heel flap and my turn. Um, so here soon, it's just gonna be flying. As soon as I finish that gusset, which I'm like looking at it, is gonna be very quickly. Um, I used to follow a very structured sock pattern. Now I've kind of found a recipe that really works for me. Um, I need kind of like a wider leg. So I tend to knit like the large size. And then um, once I get past that, I will decrease on my actual foot. So it's not the exact same number of stitches that are on kind of the body of the leg. Um, and I've just figured out what works for me by testing up certain patterns. If you want a video of me explaining how to do that, I'm happy to do that. Um, and I cannot wait to wear them. I'm gonna block them and I'm hoping to do a lot of hiking in them. That is one of my favorite things is to hike and knit socks. I feel like they just hold up really, really well. Um, so those are the two projects that I'm working on. I'm also knitting the Oslo hat or wearing the Oslo hat uh, by Petite Knit. It is the same sock yarn base in New York black. Um, and I actually shortened the top uh, because I want it to be more of like that fisherman, kind of that taupe, very short, just above my ear. Um, so I intentionally knit less after I did like the, the pearl bumps, which you can kind of see here. And I think the last thing I really wanted to talk about um, was one of the colorways that I have in my shop right now. Um, and I met up with a gal who purchased some of this yarn at Acorn Street Shop. And she was telling me about why she loved it and why she liked it and why she was knitting with it. And that is like one of the best feelings in the world. So because this is a Seattle specific yarn, I wanted to share it with everyone else out there who might not have seen it because I think this was initially only available in my pop-up store at Acorn Street Shop. I've now since put it on my site. Um, so I will put a little picture somewhere um, so you can see what a swatch of it looks like knit up. Um, but this is an Emotions colorway acorn street shop um, it is in my ritual fingering weight yarn which is a hundred percent non superwash merino um, it's two ply and so it kind of has this almost fingering like chunky texture to it um, which is sort of hard to describe um, but it creates this almost really warm cozy country-esque feel type of fabric which i've really enjoyed i'll have to see if i can find a picture of a swatch of it other than the one that i just shared uh, so let's talk about how this colorway came to be uh, i was doing a pop-up at one of my favorite stores here in seattle and i love the two owners mary and janet so much they just bring so much joy to the work that they do and to the community and the people that come to that store um, i've been to a lot of yarn stores and sometimes as a male knitter, I come in there and either people kind of like flock to me or they kind of give me a weird side eye. I felt like Mary and Janet just embraced me um, and allowed me to be me versus being in this awkward setting. Um, and so when I was doing this pop-up, I had just moved back to Seattle and I was like, hey, I wanna do something kind of fun and unique for the store. And I want to do an Acorn Street inspired colorway. What are some words um, that you would use to describe the store. I was expecting cozy, crafty, warm. Nope. <laughs> they used words like obsessed, contagious, inspired, um, and then part of the community and to feel like they're at home, like more welcoming than um, cozy. And I laugh because it's just, it's them. It's Mary and Janet describing themselves in such a great way. So, if you've been to the store, you'll know that a lot of times they'll have fun colored hair. Their personality is very vibrant and exciting and giggly. Um, and so I think that's just what makes it so much fun. And so you'll have a lot of like excited, so contagious. I felt like yellow and pink 
were colors that you kind of see and you're like, ah, oh, I really, really love those. Um, and you get it, you just want to do that. Um, obsessed blue. I feel like blue is just one of those colors that everyone gravitates towards and everyone at some point in their life has some connection to blue or has a, a phase where they go through blue. Um, but then they wanted some of like that at home, you know, part of the community. And I love this like soft tan creamy color that you'll kind of see speckled throughout. Um, so that is the story of how this yarn came to be. And I think this is one of my favorite ways to do yarn is to not be so literal. Like I did a book, uh, Emotions Colorway, inspired by a book called Yes Daddy, where it was a pretty big lift off of the cover because I felt like the cover did such a good job describing the book. Um, but then I did something like uh, Danya, um, her book, Notes on an Execution. Notes on an Execution is like a purple cover. You would never guess that just looking at the cover, um, that this is what was inspired. Um, so I really like to do those sort of things where you kind of do the unexpected and you find a deeper meaning. And then when you get the yarn and you're knitting something, you're already pouring so much love into it. You can really craft something extra special into your garment that you're going to wear. You have a story that only a few people know, or it's really personal to you, or you get a deep meaning behind the yarn. And that's just one of the favorite things that I love about hand dyeing yarn. So that is it. I wanted to keep this one short and sweet. I know I've done a couple longer videos in the past and I feel like people are liking the shorter content more. So I will keep it nice and short, maybe increase the frequency. Frequency feels great to me. Um, I think I want to do a couple other more tutorial-esque videos or do some videos that are not necessarily 100% related to knitting, a little bit more of my personality. I feel like that's the beauty of this format. So with that, have an amazing day and I can't wait to talk to you soon.